Greetings, travelers. Welcome to Lorespire. Today, we are covering the deities of the Wayward Realms. In this video, I will present all the information I could find on the deities as well as some of my own thoughts where appropriate. As always, it is early in development, so it is possible some of this information could change, but this is the most complete information I could find at this time. Now, before we talk about the goddesses as individuals, let's talk about them collectively. First, even though they are referred to and worshipped mostly as goddesses throughout the archipelago, other cultures outside of the archipelago are known to worship them in other forms. Sometimes as men and likely as animals and in other forms as well. The main point of this is to remember that the Wayward Realms deities don't really have genders and may not even have form as we mortals think of it. They are simply assigned genders and other forms by the mortals who worship them. The deities are not strictly good and have been described more like the Greek gods who can be petty and cruel as much as they can be benevolent. Also, there is no proof that the deities take an active role in the world of the Wayward Realms at all. Of course, most people believe they do. But occurrences people might use as proof that the deities do in fact control what happens in the world can likely be explained away as natural phenomena or happenstance or possibly some interference from Melora or nymphs instead of the goddesses themselves. There is no plan to allow the players to directly interact with the goddesses of the archipelago, so it will be up to you to use the experience of your adventures to decide for yourself whether or not the goddesses actually actively play a role in the events of the world. Eos Though there are variations in how Eos is depicted and worshipped, she is best known for being the goddess of life-bringing, healing, harvests, and warmth. You will often see symbols of birth, the sun, plentiful harvests, or various animals adorned within her temples to celebrate her grace. The clergy of Eos believe she is about protection, family, and basically everything previously mentioned. However, the Inquisition see her more as a protector and worship her in their own way, offering protection to those they deem worthy through persecution of those they believe unworthy, mostly demi-humans and mages, especially mages. Dael is the goddess representing youth, wind, travel, and new beginnings. Worshipped mostly in Southern Splendor, it's common to see Dael depicted running, flying, and swimming in an energized, carefree state of mind. For those of you who are planning more lighthearted or whimsical characters in your Wayward Realms playthrough, should consider making Dael your character's goddess of choice, as she would fit such an adventurer quite well. Andreka, the goddess of sex, love, and seduction. Andreka is celebrated by many in Splendor and Iridan. She is usually represented as either human or elf and is the most revered deity amongst courtesans and politicians. It's said that Andreka created love and the union of two began with her. Now here's a quick story about the kind of love Andreka can inspire. When the wizard saints divined the stars, an ogre among them took the name Valentos. He became renowned for his love of the goddess, Andreka, eventually banishing the hateful malice Odiamos from Lavinium in her name and winning her heart. His undying love is celebrated to this day. Nikti Nikti is known to represent victory, strength, power, and warriors. She is worshipped in both She and Splendor, and often depicted as a giantess warrior woman, either orc or human. Nikti is one of the two goddesses most revered by the orcs. Her priests typically master magic based on physical enhancement such as boosts to strength or stamina. So for those of you who want to play magically enhanced warriors and the like, you will likely find yourselves using whatever magic discipline ends up being associated with Nikti. Sarkanya A name that strikes both fear in heart and peace in mind, Sarkanya is the goddess of war, death, and fear. Worshipped throughout the archipelago, Sarkanya is usually depicted as a fearsome demon, half-dragon, snake, or spider. Some view her only as a bringer of death, 
while others view her as a guardian of the afterlife. Through unknown means, and for unknown reasons, Sarkanya slew her twin, the goddess Fortuna. Sarkanya is the other of the two goddesses most revered by the Orkish peoples. And as we said, like most of the goddesses, Sarkanya has worshippers throughout the archipelago. But in this case, we know the port town of Raven Harbor to be particularly devout in its worship of Sarkanya. Raven Harbor can be found on the Isle of Ijar, which means all of you Sarkanya fans out there will have at least one town in the early access build of the game that is particularly fond of your goddess. Umbria Umbria, goddess of darkness, assassination, plots, poison, and secrets. She is usually depicted as a pure black shadow, though sometimes she is represented as another creature entirely. For example, the Jungarian horsemen believe dreams are the realm of the goddess Umbria, and they worship her as a completely black horse, which her husband, the Malice Takiros, rides upon, shepherding the dead into Umbria's dream world afterlife. Most of Umbria's priests are masters of subterfuge, versed in the arts of invisibility and illusion. So, general illusionists and all of you magically capable assassins and thieves out there will likely be using whatever discipline of magic is perceived to be linked to Umbria. Fortuna Scholars speak of a forgotten deity, once the eldest and most powerful. Fortuna, goddess of luck and fate, was struck down by her twin Sarkanya. The six goddesses would go on to rule in her stead, shaping the peoples and history of the world a world now bereft of destiny. Due to her death, Fortuna is the only goddess without common worship in the archipelago, though it has been said that cults devoted to Fortuna may still be found in certain places. The symbol you can see here at the bottom of Fortuna's artwork appears to be the destroyed moon that you can see in other artworks and screenshots we've been given. This implies that she is connected to that moon and that its destruction could have been caused by her death. If true, that implies that the other deities are likely connected to the other moons that orbit the world of the Wayward Realms. Also, there are seven moons and seven deities if you count the destroyed moon and Fortuna. The point being, it seems likely that the moons are connected to the deities in some way. Anyways, back to Fortuna. In my mind, she is possibly the most interesting of all the goddesses, and it's not because she is described as the eldest and most powerful, nor is it because luck and fate are, or were, her domains. Instead, it's actually those last six words in the description given for her. A world now bereft of destiny, that I find most interesting. Now, I may be reading too much into this, but hear me out, okay? Uh, the Wayward Realms is a game in which the player character is just a normal adventurer. The player isn't the chosen one, they aren't saving the world or even a kingdom within it, and there is no ancient prophecy to follow. Hell, there isn't even a main story quest to guide you along. You may become a hero on some smaller scale, depending on the choices you make and the actions you take, but you have no grand destiny to fulfill. Whether purposeful or not, the choice once lost games made for the deity of luck and fate to have died is a perfect fit for a game setting in which the player is just some random adventurer and whatever you become is left up to you. I for one am glad the world of the Wayward Realms is bereft of destiny. The game just wouldn't be the same if it wasn't. So if you found this video interesting, be sure to check out these other videos here for more info on the Wayward Realms. And if you haven't backed the Kickstarter yet, consider doing so. There's a link in the description. It could use your help to reach those stretch goals. This has been Chris with Lorespire. Be well, my friends.